Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, it is Memorial Day. Um, I, I'm not sure if I should have maybe um, po postponed this or not, but we're just going to go ahead. We're just going to go have at it. Um, anyway, thank you for joining me. Um, as you do pop on, um, please comment with your name. Um, where you are watching from, and uh, pronouns, and I don't know, tell me a little bit about um, how you're beating the heat. Um, Natasha, hi. Um, Natasha, just bear with me. Um, this is a lesson type as well. Hi, Justin. Um, let me share this out a couple places, and then I will go ahead and get started. That should already be shared there. All right. Natasha from London, how are you? And is that, um, are you in London, um, Ontario, or London in the UK? Bath, UK. Wow. Hi, everyone. Hi, Whitney. Um, again, I'm just sharing this out a few places, so... Bear with me, and then we'll go ahead and uh, get started. So today we are learning about the aces um, in tarot. So um, divination station on Three of Cups. Hi, Tasha. So Three of Cups Divine Arts is a collective where a um, bunch of awesome people get together and post lives. Um, some of them tend to be, some of them are just reading, some of them are lesson as well. Kimberly, hi, thank you. Um, so again, so let me get this started. Okay, so in order to get um, a card pull at the end, hi Kyla, um, what we do ask is that you share the broadcast. So share it out um, on either a page, group, or anything like that. Tag your friends. Um, just comment, hashtag shared. That way I can keep track. Um, I keep a list going here. Um, also, make sure you do like Three of Cups if you have not liked the page yet. I get it. <laughs> I get it, Justin. Hi, Katie. Oh, my gosh. I'm, like, melting. And, I mean, it was snowing, like, a week and a half ago. So, it's definitely an adjustment for me. <laughs> Thank you, Kyla. Thank you, Tasha. Um, so today, going to be going over the aces in tarot. Um, so we're going to be going over um, each card individually um, and some of their meanings. So what the aces mean overall and then individual meanings and how to kind of interpret them in a spread um, or a reading, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, I did decide, hi Jackie. Um, I decided to do it this way since we are, we wrapped up um, the fool's journey in the majors, so we're starting the minors. But I kind of thought maybe going over each card in detail might be a little much. Um, maybe I'll do it in the future. So from now on, uh, I'm going to be looking at the aces, then all the twos, the threes, etc. And yes, my hair is definitely, um, my hair feels a little crazy. Um, it gets a little bit frizzy puffy, even though it's straight and it is warm. It feels like, yeah, it's like holding in all of my heat. But if I pull it up, then it just kind of drips. Anyway, I don't do well in the heat. Will just suffice to say. Um, all right, so thank you for joining. Um, again, I'm Liz Whitaker of Divination Station Tarot. Um, I will put my Facebook page link in the bottom. Um, I would love if you have not yet liked my page, I would love if you did. Um, what that does is helps us, helps me bring in people to my page organically. And it's good for everybody. Um, so just bear with me one moment while I get that while I get that link shared. 
Perfect. Okay, and I am extending my thanks. Maybe someone's still awake. Thanks, Justin. Um, okay. Perfect, Alex. Good job. <laughs> okay, so we're going to be looking at the aces today. So, and in most tarot books, you're going to see the car, you're going to see the suits. Um, we, remember, we talked about the suits in the last broadcast. So you're usually going to see them in this order. Wands, cups, swords, and pentacles. I actually have yet to see or figure out why they're in that order, but that's just the order that we're in. So I'm going to try to keep everything in that order when I go through them. Um, I'm going to try. So aces. Aces start every suit. They are the pure energy of that suit. So what does that mean? So I think of it as potential energy. Um, I think of it as like the most opportunity you have in that suit. You have like the whole everything in front of you. And the Rider Waite Smith, the deck that we're going to be looking at the fir at first, you're going to see every card is a hand coming out of a cloud presenting that suit. Um, and they're going to be a little bigger um, than the way that they appear in the rest of the suit. Um, numerologically, aces are the beginnings. Again, that most powerful, uh, that most potential power in that suit. Uh, if you have, um, if you're doing a reading or a spread, if it's a larger one and you have three aces, it um, doesn't matter which ones, but if you have three, it's going to mean wealth and success. Or if it's a yes or no question and you have three of these aces pop up, then that answer is going to be yes. Um, four, so if all four aces show up in a spread, that's going to mean exceptional greatness. So if you're doing for a, re a reading for someone or yourself and all four aces pop up, that's, that's huge energy. So that's kind of, we'll look at them and then we'll kind of go through each of them individually. So here we have the Ace of Wands, Ace of Cups, Ace of Swords, and Ace of Pentacles. And you can see these two, our, our spirit is coming from this way, and these two spirit is coming from this way. So I like to pay attention to that too. When I, you know, when I'm doing a reading, I look at the directionality of the cards. Where are they pointing? What's going on around them? And that can kind of give you some indication of what they're going to mean in that specific spread. So, um, Ace of Wands. Some keywords here. So we have the most energy possible, most energy in the suit of fire. And you can kind of see, it's kind of a dark cloud, but this energy kind of emerging forth. Venture, opportunity, um, kind of that carpe diem energy, that seize the day energy. Um, it is the power of vitality and growth. It's the birth of a new project and development. So when you see this one so how it differs a bit from the pentacles which we'll get to this is kind of the birth of that project and its development it doesn't necessarily mean success right away right it's that beginning stage it's that i have a baby idea for a project or whatever and i'm going to put energy into growing it it's enthusiastic beginnings first impulses it's the first minor card in the minor suit or er, in the suits so it's kind of like that first it, it's kind of like aries energy is 
what I think when I think of this. So that impulsive, that first impulse. And, you know, feel free to go ahead and comment, ask any questions as we're going. Um, I didn't get my AC put in today. I should have. It was, I've made a terrible mistake. Um, next, Ace of Cups. So what do you think of when you see this Ace of Cups? What sort of feelings does it bring? Um, it's abundance. It's affirmation. So if this cup comes up in a reading where you're kind of like, I'm not sure if this is the right idea or this is the right thing, this is the right relationship, and Ace of Cups comes up, then that's a uh, yes. Uh, it is a breakthrough in love matters, relationship matters. So if you're having, um, and I also look at it as like that new relationship energy card where there's all of this potential energy. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's the beginnings of prosperity, health, love. So all of those things, it is that beginning. And when I see this card, and again, remember every card has kind of a positive and negative spin to it. So if you're looking at this and you're like, it's kind of overwhelming, that can be uh, another meaning for this card. So sometimes when we start a new relationship or we start something new and we have all of that like energy coming in, it can be a little bit overwhelming. And it almost feels like we're like, we can't hold on to our own energy. So like empath, empaths, you know, where your energy just kind of flows out and other people's kind of flows in. Uh, this card too is all about emotion. You know, there's no land in, the, in back. So like most of them, you're going to see um, fields or forests. This one is just water. And we have um, the lily pads and lotus flowers. So depending on your, um, kind of depending on your background, depending on how you see that is how you're going to interpret that. Are they lotus flowers? Are they um, lily pads? You know, they both come up from, um, from the bottom. So, you know, lotus, you have to go through mud to get the, to the sun. There's that idea too. Um, it can be love on any level. Um, grace, it's healing, uh, gifts. So any of those things can be represented by the Ace of Cups. It's the purest form of that gift. Um, so what I'm kind of getting is like any like healing art. So it's that spiritual awakening. You know, some people look at this and they look at it as, um, you know, the dove is grace. The dove is peace and harmony. And it's holding that um, equal armed cross. And there's the idea of the baptismal font. So again, you know, really that idea of that spiritual awakening and that love and relationship with spirit. Ace of Swords. So this one, um, this is just what it reminds me of is, you know, the lady in the lake with the sword and you kind of pull the sword up and it already has the crown there and it has the, has the seaweed coming down because it's been in the lake. Um, but it's kind of that it's truth becomes clear. You know, the hand is offering you the sword of truth. It is one of three cards where the sword is upright in the tarot. Um, justice and queen of swords are the other two. So both of those cards are really about truth, recognizing the truth, acknowledging the truth, speaking the truth. Truth becomes clear. Um, mental independence. So it might be breaking free from, you know, someone that's been trying to control you in that mental realm. Um, acute intellect. Um, if you have, and I'm kind of, you know, picturing you have these like great ideas and things coming through. Um, it's also a new way to approach communication. Maybe whatever you're doing hasn't really been working. And, you know, we have, it's, it's an opportunity to, my 
cat is poking around back here, so I'm just waiting for him to, to make some room for himself. Um, I don't remember where it was. Anyway, um, so swords, you know, our intellect, communication. Um, but it's also like literally a weapon. Okay, so every sword card kind of has a double-edged meaning. It can bring sorrow in, its, in the wake of truth. I like that. Um, commitment to truth. Um, the crown is honor. Gift of clear thought. Um, conquest, valiance, like any of those things that are really, you know, think of like, you know, going on the quest for knowledge. Fierce, can be strong-willed. If you're, you know, if you're a person that's strong-willed, your will is the truth. Um, I resonate with that a little bit. So your will is the truth. And Ace of Pentacles. It's a new offer in the material realm. So it can, it can actually literally be a new job offer or a new opportunity for you to take something to that next level and get some money rolling in for it. It's a new venture, investment, um, or just property gain. It can be property. Property is earth. Uh, it's a resource. Um, launching that new project brings prosperity. So if you get these two guys, you know, you launch that project and everything rolls out the way that it's supposed to, it's going to turn into money for you. Um, it is that initial step for financial gain. So you get the job offer. Cool. That's your first step. You know, then you have to go through and take the job and then do well the job and, you know, get promoted at the job. Um, so that's kind of that ace of pentacles. I mean, it also embodies nature, culture, and heritage. So if you look at the bottom here, your will is the truth. Yeah, and when I said that, I kind of like, um, that kind of hit me too. So I'm actually writing that down. Thank you, Katie, for reminding me. Um, so, you know, we see this um, pentacle being given to us. And it can also be that earth element. Um, it can be um, hearing your calling, you know, your life plan, your life goal, your life purpose. Um, it can be the gift of nature, sanctuary. Somewhere where somewhere peaceful, um, that natural world idea. So sometimes when I pick this, especially you know springtime, it actually reminds me of you know I'll ask people, do you garden? Um, you know, do you do things like do you garden? Do you are you planning on it? Um, all of these things to bring in that earth suit. And I always show that. So they, that's the gateway too. So that gateway is the gateway to your potential. Yeah. My computer's making a, uh, it's probably real warm. The fan's on, so I'm just shutting a couple things that I'm not using down here. So that's all of the aces. So you can kind of see the similarities in the energies and also the differences, right? So Ace of Swords and Ace of Cups. What happens when both of those come up in a reading? Okay, it might mean that in that new relationship, if it is romantic in nature, you have to communicate a little bit differently or just communicate. May, you know, just this is a person you have to communicate with. Uh, this is a person that you have to, yeah. So this could be a person that you have to tweak your normal way of communication with. They're not going to understand. Um, 
so that's kind of how you can read them in that way. Uh, here, you know, I would say these two might be, you know, you have that new opportunity, that new, that first step in material, and you need to know the best way to do it for you. Um, if you get, you know, this one, you know, we kind of talked about this one already. You have the idea for that new project. Oh my gosh, I'm getting all mixed up here. <laughs> you have that idea for that new project, and then you're getting paid for that new project. It's coming to fruition. So once you kind of break down the suits, and then you break down, we'll say numerically, uh, for lack of a better word, so looking at all the aces, looking at all of the twos, you can see the similarities in that energy. Hi, sunshine. And you can also kind of understand the differences. Um, I really like to learn that way is putting everything together and then seeing how they're similar and different. Okay, so that's the Rider Waite Smith. Very similar artwork, similar, similar symbolism. And then we'll take a look at the Tarot de Marseille, okay? And we'll kind of look at them with the Rider Waite Smith in comparison, just so we can see here. There's some there's some similarities, right? So we have the two. We have the hand coming out, and here it looks like a looks like a cuff. So it looks like we're actually seeing the hand this way. And we have the sword, or I'm sorry, we have the wands. And there we go. So here, you see these little like, little driplets, little droplets. Um, these are actually, um, they're referred to as yods, Y-O-D. I've talked about them a few times here and there, um, one in the Major Arcana. That's energy, okay? It comes from the Hebrew letter yod. It is basically dripping with that pure energy. So if you've ever wondered what those little leafy doodads are, that's what they are. And then the cups. Um, we kind of have a similar idea. Except this cup is really ornate. You know, we don't quite have the hand detail, but it takes up the whole card. Okay, and it does have that kind of like fancy... Um, and these, like the feathers, you know, kind of remind me of the cloud here. And then we have the dove too. So this is the Ace of Cups in the Tarot de Marseille. And I do, and I am, I do have another Tarot de Marseille deck on the way. Um, so I'm interested. I, I'm, I'm excited to use that one too. Swords. And again, this one's very similar. Um, we have the hand coming from the same direction. Um, again, it looks more like the frilled sleeve than the cloud. Um, we have the sword and the crown and then the foliage kind of coming down and the little energy, energy droplets. So these are pretty similar. And the Ace of Pentacles, again, we kind of just have that idea of just one big pentacle taking up the card. And the pentacles in this Terra de Marseille deck um, are, like, they have all of these, like, really fancy kind of, like, curly cues, and they look like coins. Um, so that is another thing that you're going to see in some decks. The pentacles are coins, and they're actually going to look like coins. So that's the Terra de Marseille. These ones are very similar to the Rider Waite Smith. Um, not so much when you get into the other um, number cards, and we'll see that too, um, since they are, it is a pip deck, and after we start rolling, you're going to understand what that means, and to be honest, it's going to be, um, it's also going to be learning for me, um, because I haven't really spent too much time, you know, learning the straight pip decks, so it's going to be a really great opportunity for me to, you know, really kind of deep dive that with you, and learn alongside you. Um, so this is the Thoth deck. So this one, it's, again, they're all just, it's just real big. 
Um, Ace of Wands. So here we have that energy um, indicated in what looks like flames and what looks like um, like electricity. So it really kind of taps into that idea that this is, you know, maximum power, maximum potential power, and it needs to be harnessed. Because energy and fire are both, you know, destructive and necessary for, you know, humans to live. It just has to be, it has to be contained and it has to be regulated. We have to be able to use it for it to be helpful. Um, Ace of Cups. And this one's like, bah. like this one I can like hear the like, um, like the major chords if you're in, you know, into any sort of, um, you know, music or music theory, like this resonates to with me as a major chord that like a victory chord, um, like I can hear this card. So we have like that spirit coming down, filling the cup. That cup can barely contain all of that energy that's coming down. And again, that's emotion. And we see the water, we see the, you know, kind of idea of that water kind of spilling out. And here it kind of looks like um, petals. And like almost like a seashell at the top. And here the sword, Ace of Swords. So we have that one single sword straight up and forward and that idea of that crown and yellow. So again, especially with these, with this deck, um, the Thoth deck, color, and color associations with the Golden Dawn are going to be really important. So yellow is power and like joy and happiness. And we kind of have this sword rising up from all of these like, kind of like turbulent clouds. And it's raising the truth from the depths. And then Ace of Discs. So it's going to be Discs in this deck. So here we have, you know, that idea that it is money. Uh, right the center looks like a coin. But then here, you know, we have wood. You know, we have wood, a tree with the rings. We have the um, wings. And this kind of looks like, um, you know, like a beetle or other feathers. And again, that nice lush green color, like fertility almost. So this is Ace of Discs. Um, so these are the three main decks, again, that I'm going to be focusing on um, through this, this leg of the series. Um, and I'm also going to pick uh, one additional deck. I'm not going to go through as many as I did before because that just would take too much time. So this first, for the first one, I chose uh, the Barbara Walker Tarot. Um, and I know I've, I've used um, a couple of hers um, for um, the Fool's Journey as well. Um, but I mainly wanted to show this because I wanted to show the Ace of Swords. Okay. So Ace of Wands. Raising Truth from Doubt. Yeah. Yeah. So Ace of Wands in this deck is power. So it shows uh, a goddess figure raising the primordial serpent, primordial serpent from the depths. And it is under her power. She is raising it. So whether this is Eve and Leviathan, whether the serpent is... Um, or a Boros, or what is it? What's a serpent in Norse mythology? It's slipping my mind. Ye 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 anyway, um, so you can kind of see that power, you know? So if this pops up, what are you raising? What are you using your power to raise and harness? Ace of Cups, love. Um, and this is the fishtail goddess, um, Ar Arche, Arche, 
It's also the fishtail variety of variety version of Aphrodite. And she's drinking from the cup of love. Um, she is the mother of all elements. So Ace of Swords here is called Doom. Okay, so we have the sword. It's straight, but it's kind of straight down. And here we also have, you know, the, we have the, we still have the crown, right? So this card is very evocative for me. Oh, thank you, Katie. Yes, Ouroboros. So this is Morgan Le Fay. Okay, she is the a goddess of death. So, and we kind of have this idea here of, you know, the darkness of the soul. And I did just kind of want to read from here. Um, she does have a, she has a book that goes with this deck too that I do have. And I was annoyed to realize that it's one of them that's still packed. I mean, most of my, a lot of my books are still packed. Um, so she is the third of the fate trinity. So... The ace, so it stands for release, still stands for truth and releasing the truth. But sometimes we don't get to that truth without the death of our previous self. So that's why I like this ace of swords, even though it's called doom. <laughs> so again, very evocative, but you have to kind of like cut through the bullshit with that sort of truth to get to the other side. Um, and then Ace of Pentacles, reward. So that meaning goes right along with everything, you know, that we've already learned about the Ace of Pentacles. It's reward. But here, again, we have this, um, this serpent. And this goddess figure being, it looks like she's being, you know, sacrificed. Um, she is the earth goddess. It's sacrificing herself for reward. It is Kore, K-O-R-E. Kore is the maiden. When the maiden gets taken to the underworld, now she's Persephone. She sacrifices De Demeter you know, searches for her, you know, we kind of go through that whole, the, the rest of that myth. Demeter sacrifices her daughter, Kore, to the underworld. And for that, um, Hades releases her for six months. So it is, it's sacrifice and reward. So again, I really wanted to show the aces in this deck because they are so like, it's like they don't seem to make sense until you really look at it and kind of break it down. And you're like, oh, that definitely does make sense. So um, that is kind of the, the teaching portion. Um, and instead of doing the tarot tip, um, I am going to do um, a tarot walkthrough instead. Um, just where I kind of go through a deck and kind of talk about it, give you my thoughts, um, how I use it, how I would use it if it's a new deck. Just figured I'd go for something a little bit different. Um, so with, and then, and then I'll do the card readings. So the first one I picked was a uh, majors only. <laughs> so this is uh, affirmations for the everyday goddess. It's a spiritual guidebook and wisdom cards. So it is all major arcana. Yeah, the Barbara Walker deck, Katie. I know. Um, the first time I saw that deck, I super resonated with it and had to get it. And then it's, it is not a deck for the faint of heart. And by that, I mean, I mean, it will, it will tell you the truth. And if you are not ready for that, that is not the deck for you. It is brutal. Um, at least it has been for me in my readings. Um, so this deck is the... Um, again, the affirmations for an everyday goddess. 
Um, so that is the world. I just kind of want to show a few here. Um, the Hermit. So this card takes the archetypes. It's the Empress. Takes the archetypes of the Rider Waite Smith. And kind of tweaks it a little bit. So this is the Lovers. And she's kind of, it's like an angel holding on to, it's, it's like a, the angel is the main part and the, the couple is on the, the micro level. Hanged one. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I just wanted to get, I just wanted to get, have you get the idea of the deck and they haul, they have um, affirmations on the bottom. It's hard to show. So I wisely use my life force energy to create and direct my, my good work in the world. So what is this deck deck good for? Um, who would be, yeah, how would you use it? What's it good for? I like it for affirmation work. If, you know, you still want to do daily pulls, but it's feeling a little bit draggy, this is a really good, yeah, drawn to decks you like the look of. Absolutely. Um, if you want a little bit of an uplift, this is a great deck for that. Um, it has a wisdom card prayer guide. So it basically gives you like, and they're, a little, they're more like meditations than prayers. So this one, Empress. May I feel love for and connect with all beings. So if that's your card for the day or that comes up in your spread, that's something to really reflect on and meditate on. So this is a really good deck if you want something for affirmations. If you want a card that's really going to give you kind of something to think about. Yes, it is affirmations for the everyday goddess. And I know um, last week, Jenna asked, you know, what about using, you know, pulling majors and using them? You know, and this is a deck that is just majors. You can also, you know, integrate more than one deck. If you want big thing and then pull other cards underneath it, you can always, or clarifiers, you can always pull something like this as a clarifier and just be like, I'm really not sure what that means. And you're like, okay, so I get, okay, the hanged one. So my sacrifice will strengthen my devotion to the divine and deepen my compassion. Yes, and God. But this one's, this one I chose um, kind of has those nice um, goddess affirmations. So that is, um, again, I just kind of wanted to go through. Let me know if you like this format, if you like me going through um, and just kind of touching on one deck a week just to give you, you know, an idea of what's out there. It might spark something in you and you're like, I really like that deck. And, you know, maybe you go out and get it or if you want, if you see a deck and you're like, I want a reading with that deck, I can do that. So yeah, if you like this format, let me know. So I, yeah, I figured I'd start with something a little, a nice, uh, nice majors only deck. This is one of my, uh, my quarantine purchases. It's fine. So, um, again, I just want to kind of throw in the little ad break here. Thank you for joining Divination Station. I need to learn more before I can get any more. Absolutely. Join me. Um, if you have any questions, um, I do have um, a Facebook group. Um, Three of Cups has a Facebook group. There's plenty of online resources. Um, in my group, there's a lot of kind of like learning back and forth. Um, sometimes it's more active than others. Um, but yes. Um, but yeah, you have my page. If you follow the page, you can find my group. Um, and you know, I have all of my videos posted. I actually went back and 
put the cover for what the episode is. So it'll be real and put them all on my playlist on Three of Cups. So if you go to videos and go to playlists, Divination Station will have all of my episodes. I don't know if they're in order. I actually don't think that they are. I'm going to mess with that a little bit and get them in order. Um, I do actually have them on my YouTube channel too. Um, complete with my random chit chat with comments. So I bet that's real fun to watch, but whatever. Um, just getting started there. So yeah, Justin, reach out to me if you, you know, want to, you know, really narrow down where any resources are. We gotcha. So for readings today, um, oh yeah, I didn't finish my ad break. So, uh, three of cups, divine arts, um, like the page, join the group, um, turn on notifications. So, you know, when anybody goes live, um, you can catch Bridget and Hedge Rider. Um, you can catch, um, Emily. Um, my YouTube is, um, let me just, and I don't know what this does for the screen, so it's probably annoying. So I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm just trying to get my channel here. I don't know if that worked. Um, my YouTube channel is Divination Station. I will post the link here. I just don't want to do it too much. A good deck. So a couple different ways to look at this, okay? You can look for a deck that really resonates with you and learn on that deck. Rider Waite Smith is a great deck to start on because there's so many resources for it. The deck itself doesn't resonate with everyone. Um, I personally, it's the deck that I use when I do readings in public, when I do readings at events. Um, I, I've been studying it for so long that the meetings are just really like in my brain, okay? So this is the Rider Waite Smith. It's kind of that classic, you know, tarot deck. If you see it in any TV show that has tarot, it's probably this or Tarot de Marseille. Um, so it depends on what feels right for you, Kimberly. If you want a deck that has a ton of resources, you can get a lot of books. Um, Rider Waite Smith is probably the way to go. Um, then again, if you're at a, if you're in a shop or, you know, you're on Etsy and you see a deck that you really like, don't hesitate to get it. Okay. Um, most decks are going to come with their own little white book. Okay. This is the little white book or LWB, um, in, in lingo. Um, so this will have general information. Okay, it'll have general info on the deck and on tarot in general. It is not going to be very, it is not going to be super detailed, but it's going to be enough to get you started. And then you can, so the idea of it is tarot is a system. Okay, so every deck, I know, every deck has its own has its own feel, but tarot as a whole, the cards have the same meanings. Ballpark. Okay. Some might be worded a little bit differently, but any of the decks that you see me using, you know, they're going to have the same idea. So I happen to have the light seers tarot right here. So if I've never picked up this deck and I've studied Rider weight, you know, where I've studied the other systems. I can pick this up. I can look at the Queen of Pentacles and see Queen of Pentacles energy, right? I can look at it and I can say, okay, Queen, I know what Queens are. Pentacles, I know what Pentacles are. You know, and you can kind of put that together and then use your intuition to tune into the imagery of the specific deck. So... Kimberly, I, I hope that answers your question. Um, my first answer is get a deck that resonates with you first and foremost. And then Rider Waite Smith. So, 
So let me just share my, my link in there. So for the readings today, um, I am going to do Oracle card readings. Um, I have a couple. Awesome. Thank you. Cool, cool. Light Sears. Oh my gosh. I thought this was like hippy dippy, like love and light nonsense until I saw someone reading live with it on, on Facebook. And I was like, it, the deck just speaks to me. It is multicultural. It is intersectional. You know, it, it shows, um, I, I love it. So that is one I definitely recommend, and I'll probably be doing more of a walkthrough at some point. Um, but let me just share my link. Okay. So you have a, I have whoever um, answers first is going to be the deck that we're going to use because I couldn't make up my mind. So I wanted to do something that was very uplifting, very um, motivational, uh, affirmational. So I have, um, energy divine Oracle, or I have the universe has your back Oracle. Um, again, I couldn't make up my mind. So I just figured I'd give you a choice. So whoever has an opinion first, that's the deck we're going to use. Put it in the comments and I'll start shuffling. And once you, um, I do get to your name. Um, Kimberly is first. Just let me know you're here. All right. Which one am I going to use? Someone make a decision. Universe or energy? Which one? Come on. Come on, guys. You don't care? Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. So like I said, I kind of wanted something that was very uplifting and really affirmative, really simple, straight to the point. And that's kind of what we're getting with both of these. So again, Kimberly, you are up first. There we go. Thank you for letting me know it's lagging. I've seen a lot of people that have had issues the past couple days with getting kicked off. So I'm just glad that I didn't get kicked off. Okay, Kimberly. Correct your mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes. We're human. We make them literally every day. But, you know, we got to go in and correct them. If something, um, if we know we did something that wasn't for our highest and best or, you know, that hurt someone, you know, it's, it's okay. Don't dwell in, like, guilt because that just kind of compounds it. Just recognize it. Um, apologize and move on. Yeah, and I will say um, I am kind of a not so low key type A nut job and perfectionist. And I worked for Lush Cosmetics for, well, four years straight, and I go back every year for holiday. One of the biggest lessons that I learned there is it's okay to make mistakes. Um, the company was started because two other companies failed. One failed miserably. One failed spectacularly. But through kind of the ashes of those companies came Lush Cosmetics. And, you know, instead of the founders just kind of getting it, getting to a standstill, they 
yeah, they learned, they figured out, okay, we're not going to do that again. Let's figure this out. And, you know, as silly as it sounds, you know, working in that retail environment, you know, really let me let it okay to make, make mistakes for myself. I'm real hard on myself with things, but kind of let me let go a little bit. Kyla, you are next. Again, Kyla, if you're here, let me know. Kyla, embrace your power. Find so that whole like ace of ace of swords for you, right? Embrace your power. Um, instead of being frightened by what everything that's coming up for you, really lean into it and embrace it. That's what's gonna bring the people, your people, to you. If showing your power. Uh, scares people off, they're not really your people. Um, and if they are, it might take some some adjustment, right? Some adjustment, getting used to you and your power. You know, it's kind of like um, the people, when we enforce our boundaries, the people that get like mad about it are the people that we're benefiting from not enforcing those boundaries. Um, Tasha, you are next. Let go and enjoy. Take a deep breath. Relax your shoulders, relax your neck, and kind of let all of that pent up tight energy go. And really look around and enjoy. Like, what are you grateful for? Enjoy the things that you're grateful for instead of dwelling on what you don't have or what you think isn't right. Let go and enjoy, you know, the life that we have. And I know sometimes that sounds like it comes from a place of privilege. And I acknowledge that. Um, you know, I, I do want to say, you know, there's gratitude in every day and ev for everyone, but I don't live everyone's life. So I want to acknowledge that I have privilege and I can wake up and say, you know, I have gratitude and I live in this world that I have, that I am grateful for. All right, Katie, face your adversities. So, you know, kind of knowing what our obstacles are facing them and doing it anyway. We're never going to get further if we don't face that, you know. And again, you know, that might, you know, it depends on what that adversity is too. Sometimes it can just be taking steps towards facing that. Sometimes we can't control what our adversities are and that's okay you know we don't we don't have to have control over everything if we can take steps um, take steps to face that and have a plan and work the plan all right Jackie you are next Pop that guy in there. Oh, and I don't know why this popped in, into my mind. There are different versions of the Rider Waite Smith as well. So if kind of like the classic, you know, kind of basic one doesn't grab you, there's also um, the, what is it, Albano Rider Waite. There's the uh, Radiant Rider Waite. There's the Centennial Rider Waite. So there's different versions of that deck as well. That just popped into my head too. Um, so Jackie, refine your attention. You know, what are we giving attention to? What we feed grows. 
If we feed fear, fear grows. Work the plant, yeah. Um, so Jackie, yeah, refine your attention. And, you know, I do, I think you've been doing a pretty good job doing this. So really, you know, keep, keep that up. And yes, when I do these lives, I do keep track of what deck I use and what cards everyone gets. Because again, that's the kind of person I am. And I kind of found out why. Um, I had a natal chart reading because I really wanted to kind of nail down the um, house system a little bit more. Really wanted to get a little bit more clarity on my houses and placements in those houses. And I'm very kind of de detail oriented and critical and self-critical, but I don't really have anything in Virgo. But I have in my, in the eighth house, um, I have Leo and Saturn. So that those two, that combo in the eighth house kind of, kind of shoves me in that direction. So it was really kind of awesome to know where some of this stuff comes from. I like to say I have an intermediate knowledge of natal charts. Um, houses are the ones that I'm, that I still kind of definitely need to look up. All right, Justin, bust out of your cocoon. So whatever's been holding you back and whatever, so what I'm seeing from this is break out of your comfort zone and really just step forward, like step into your truth and live your truth. Um, that's how great, that's how we reach greatness. That's how we reach, okay, it's how we step out of mediocrity, okay? That's a message that came through. So it's how we step out is by shattering, you know, that glass that we build up around us. Yes. And is it scary? Heck yeah. But that's okay. You know, it's only going to be scary the first time. And maybe the second or third or fourth. But you're going to get better at it. <laughs> And if you're not afraid that first time, then really, what are you waiting for? Really. All right, Alex, you are next. Ah. Accept what is dying. Okay, Alex, what does that mean for you? Are you sad about the egg, Justin? <laughs> Are you sad about busting out of your cuckoo? Um, so, Alex, accept what is dying. It's all about... Yeah. <laughs> and it should be awesome and scary. Um, it, it should be, you know, that's what, that's what breaking for breaking forth really is. Um, that's how you're really going to kind of nail down what your truth is and how you're going to live your best life. Um, so Alex, accept what is dying. So with that, um, again, it's kind of looking at, oh, hi, Anna. It is looking at what no longer serves you. It is, everything is sticking to me. Thank you. Something is coming to an end. Um, something you might, you're just not interested in, something that just doesn't quite spark that divine energy anymore. So what is that? And it's okay to let that go. Um, it's okay to let that area go and be honest with yourself about it not being there anymore and moving forward. 
Uh, we can't bring new things in unless we go let go of old. So that's kind of what I'm getting for you, and that's for Alex. Accept what is dying. All right, Caitlin. You are next. I'll be finishing right about right about on time. I've been definitely going over the past couple weeks, but that's okay. Um, I do plan on going live on the Divination Station page for just readings. Um, I just have to find a um, I just have to find a good time to do it. Um, I do go live on Rising Goddess Facebook page. Um, it's a shop local to Buffalo, but she does ship. Um, I don't know if she shipped um, internationally yet, but I know she shipped across the country. Hi, Caitlin. Um, but if you are in Buffalo, definitely check her out. Um, I go live there um, every Wednesday for card reads or for witchy lessons or to just kind of talk about some witchy topic that's kind of come up. But you are divine enough. You are. Sometimes you have to deep dive and find that divinity within yourself. Trust you are divine enough. Take the step and let your divinity kind of like shine through for itself. Caitlin, do all things in moderation. Um, so what's kind of coming through for you with this is um, kind of work, work life balance kind of stuff. Okay. Actually, that's a good point, Justin. Um, I do tend to go live a little bit later once my day is kind of like done. Um, but that's a good point. I should go, I, you know, if I, I should tweak the time. And yeah, if you like my page and then you share it out over there, I'm going to get more international viewers and that would be awesome. Um, I did a reading for someone. So, Caitlin, um, balance and moderation is when you don't go, you know, full, when you don't go ham on any one thing. Uh, <laughs> going, going slow, not doing everything at once, um, not working like 14 hours a day. Any of this making sense? No, didn't think so. Um, Caitlin, I, I feel ya. Um, oh my gosh. I did a reading for someone that was in, um, oh, and I'm going to say this wrong. It's an island nation. It's Mauritia. Um, I did a reading for, <laughs> um, Erica, sure. Um, Um, I just do ask that you do share the, the broadcast out. So Erica, if you are somewhere and you wouldn't mind just kind of giving it a share. Um, but yeah, so I did a reading, um, a full, um, hour appointment for someone. It was three 30 my time and it was 1130 her time. And we ended up going a smidge over and I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, it is definitely bedtime. Um, but yeah, I would love to. It's actually really exciting doing more things online and getting more, you know, talking to people from different places. I love it. Um, Caitlin, I know, but try, maybe, or maybe, no, moderation and moderation. How about that? Try moderation, just a little bit. All right, Sunshine, you are next. All right, Anna, um, again, to the only thing that I do ask for these um, mini reading is to share the broadcast out. Um, so it can be um, in a group that allows it on your page, on any page. You can tag a friend. Um, it helps us kind of grow at Three of Cups Divine Arts. Awesome. You're welcome, Caitlin. Thank you.
All right, sunshine. Ooh, think things through. Okay, so um, if you were here in the beginning of the broadcast, we talked about Ace of Wands. Ace of Wands energy does not think things through. Ace of Wands energy can be very impulsive. Um, this is kind of all about looking at what you want to do and kind of thinking it through. How is this going to work? What is the best way to do this? And really think it through before you jump in without a plan. Spontaneity is great. Go. Good night. Thank you so much for joining, Justin. I really appreciate you. Get some sleep. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, thinking things through, spontaneity is great, um, but sometimes you kind of, you got to make sure it's the right step. All right, Erica, you are next. Erica, live your soul, not a role. So what does that mean? Instead of trying to reach for something that you think is expected of you, do it with your soul. Do it with, do once more with, with feeling. Um, for anybody that's not a huge Buffy nerd, that is the Buffy the Vampire musical episode. Once more with feeling. Um... Live, live your soul, not a role. Don't be de de defined or dictated. Don't allow anybody else to define or dictate you because you are a, you know, insert thing here because you are a woman, mother, wife, girlfriend, um, coworker, employee, boss, you know, whatever that happens to be, healer, light worker, card reader, what have you. Uh, once we start letting those roles dictate how we behave, we get, we lose touch with the reason that we started to do it in the first place. And then that's when it becomes a job. Um, so, and that can be with anything, right? So live your soul, not a role. <clears throat> All right, and Anna, um, I will say since we're about at the end of this, if you do share, um, that would be awesome. Um, also, please, if anybody has not liked my page yet, um, it is, um, it, I did oh, put it in the comments. I'm actually going to pin it to the top um, just so it's easily, easily found if I can find it. Um, I do also have um, a YouTube page that I commented in there as well. What it is right now is replays of the lives that I've done here. So everyone is a tarot lesson. Um, so talking about one specific card, what it is, keywords, how to, how to read with it. Um, if you've missed any, you can always watch them on the Three of Cups Divine Arts page. They are all in the Div uh, Divination Station playlist. And I took some time this past week and really and kind of kind of cleaned it up for myself. So they're all there. Okay, Anna. Face your shadow. So what does that mean? Shadow work. We're still in Pluto retrograde. Pluto retrograde is going to be here till October. So face your shadow. What are those things that you don't particularly love about yourself? And face those. Don't hide them. Don't be ashamed of them. Figure out why you feel the way that you do about them. And what, what can be done, not even necessarily to change that or to fix that, but what can be done to come to terms with that? Um, you know, these are the things that we wouldn't necessarily put on a resume. These wouldn't be the top three things when you meet someone where you're like, hey, this is who I am and this is what I do. Those aren't the things, you know, that's not, that's the opposite of your shadow. That's your front facing side. 
So that shadow side are the things that, you know, you might not be so comfy with. Um, so face that and figure out why they're there and work with them. Um, I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, again, I'm Liz Whitaker of Divination Station, uh, Divination Station Tarot on Facebook, um, YouTube, Instagram, really, I don't know, freaking everywhere. Um, make sure you follow Three of Cups Divine Arts if you have not already. Um, join the group. What else? Oh, um, True Paranormal, the podcast by Leo Rizzuti is a great place to check out um, all things haunted, paranormal. Um, he's got kind of discussion topics, um, interviews, anything like that. So check his page out. And I will be here next week, um, same time. And I'll be going over the twos. Um, and I think that's it. Um, all right. I want you to all to be safe, stay safe, stay healthy. Um, and I will see you all next week. Bye.